All signs pointing to a war brewing between Jim Jordan and the Justice Department as the Republican congressman kicks off his vendetta investigations into the Biden administration. The DOJ already pushing back on some of Jordan's requests, warning it will not provide certain information regarding ongoing investigations, including the probe into President Biden's handling of classified documents. The letter says doing so risks, quote, jeopardizing those investigations and creating the appearance that Congress may be exerting improper political pressure or attempting to influence department decisions in certain cases. So does this rebuke from the Justice Department cut the legs out from under Jim Jordan's planned probes, or will he use their response to escalate his feud with Attorney General Merrick Garland? MSNBC legal analyst Joyce Vance outlined all of this discussion in her Substack Civil Discourse, and she joins me now. Joyce, my friend, good morning. Thanks for being here. Tell our viewers why you think the position that the DOJ is taking is the right thing to do here, or is this just kind of setting the table, Joyce, for a major showdown between the House GOP majority and the DOJ? Well, it's probably both of those things, Katie, but DOJ's position here is a long-standing position that is uh, really imbued with common sense. Essentially, DOJ is guided by the principle that it should not turn over information or evidence in ongoing investigations to Congress if that has the potential to interfere with those investigations. DOJ isn't saying no as much as it's saying not now. In other words, once prosecutive decisions are made and cases uh, are well on their way or are prosecuted, that's the right time for Congress to have access to the evidence in some of these individual matters. Joyce, I'm going to have you put on a very unusual hat right now. You're going to be Jim Jordan's counsel for the House Judiciary Committee. What do you tell him to do after he gets this letter from DOJ and he gets maybe a minimal response in pursuant to the subpoenas that he serves on them? Right. So it's actually more than a minimal response. DOJ is saying, we'll share everything that you'd like to have about our process, about how we do these things, how we make these decisions. You know, even I, I suspect about how and why they obtain search warrants, although Jordan is focused far more clearly on Joe Biden and, and to a much lesser extent, if at all, on the former president. So his counsel should really be advising him to do what Congress always does in these situations, to negotiate with DOJ and to reach an accommodation that lets both branches do their job. It's important for Congress to be able to engage in oversight. It's important for, B for DOJ to be able to move its prosecutions forward. And Joyce, I appreciate the nuanced point, right? It's not like the DOJ is not giving stuff over. They're basically saying you can get some insight into the process. You can get some insight into kind of procedurally where we are in an investigation, but we're going to leave it up to the individual prosecutors within their discretion to decide what information and at what time they want to be able to turn it over. Historically, I think people like Jim Jordan were spoiled with an AG like Bill Barr, who didn't exercise what we would like to see in terms of independence and in terms of discretion. So, Joyce, is there a way, though, for Jim Jordan to go after Attorney General Merrick Garland? Would it take something like an impeachment or some type of move to remove AG Merrick Garland if Jordan's just not satisfied with what he gets? Sure, there's absolutely precedent here, and it happened to Eric Holder, Barack Obama's first attorney general. If Congress decides that they're not getting what they need, they can make a move to hold the attorney general in contempt. One suspects we'll see something like that here. But it's so important that we take a step back and think about what's going on, because these same members of Congress were not interested in engaging in oversight of DOJ's proceedings against the former president. They were certainly critical of those proceedings, but there was no one saying, you know, we need to see all of the evidence against Donald Trump. It's very clear that this is politically motivated, that this is a Benghazi-style effort to go after Joe Biden. So while we'll see DOJ, I suspect, cooperate fully to the extent that they can and that they historically have, it's very unlikely that that's going to satisfy Jim Jordan because his goal isn't oversight. His goal is like, as in Benghazi, political harassment. 
Before I have to let you go, I have to ask, in other legal news, the FBI is reportedly expected to search former Vice President Mike Pence's Indiana home and his Washington office for additional classified materials and very soon. Now, while Pence has teased a presidential run in 2024, we know he has not made an announcement yet. Should Attorney General Merrick Garland nevertheless appoint a special counsel at this time to oversee the probe like he did for Trump and for President Biden? Right, so that's such a fraught question. But under the special counsel regulations, you only appoint a special counsel when there is a criminal investigation to pursue. And as with President Biden, there is absolutely no indication here that the former vice president has violated the criminal laws. Here again, this looks like the sort of a situation where these documents were in boxes that were packed up and Mike Pence was not aware of that. It's important that we note that although the FBI is conducting searches, those are not pursuant to search warrants. Of course, when DOJ searched Mar-a-Lago, they had probable cause to believe crimes had been committed and they would find evidence of them at Mar-a-Lago. This is more the FBI acting in its national security capacity to make sure that all possible classified material is recovered from the vice president's home. This is the same process that they pursued with Joe Biden. And it's, it's always important for us to remember that the FBI has more than one hat. Yes, they are criminal investigators, but they also have national uh, security responsibilities. That's what they're fulfilling here. My friend Joyce Vance, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. There was a request for chickens. I know you told me they're asleep, so please let them know that we say hello, but we appreciate you taking the time to get up and to join us. Thank you so much. Thanks, Katie.